Killer's Kiss is really a thing apart in Kubrick's work. It's, in many ways, a kind of student film. It's a film where he is trying many different things, and he's also demonstrating that he has the mastery to make a commercially viable film on an extremely low budget. But I think it is much more than that. <laughs> I think what Killer's Kiss has is a tremendous sense of possibility. Maybe because it is a kind of young man's rough sketch, there are qualities in it that you don't find so much in Kubrick's later films. He being such a legendary perfectionist and someone who wanted to plan everything down to the smallest detail. In Killer's Kiss, the accidental comes into play more. and place comes into play more. The, the streets of New York, the hallways and staircases and rooftops where he's shooting and that he's forced to rely on in the absence of sets. And that introduces an element of, of chance and a feeling for the actual locations that becomes rare in his later work. Also, of course, it's his story. It's not adapted from high literary sources that he tended to draw on later on. It's a very slight story. It's the kind of story that could have served for a silent movie, really. It's, it's on such a rudimentary level. And it's about people adrift in New York, groping for some kind of life beyond what they have. I mean, if you just think of it, aside from the formal aspects, is it rather odd scenario and not what you would normally consider to be a well-constructed screenplay. But I think that that is actually its, its great charm, the fact that it, it does have this kind of made-up, as, as, as it goes along, quality. And then the flow of imagery almost has an independent life at times. And we're shown all kinds of things like hot dogs and Santa Claus and, and just uh, random bits of imagery from the street. I would say it anticipates some of the effects that Godard gets uh, in a few years uh, with the intrusion of more or less arbitrary incidents into Breathless and, and other early films. Of course, to speak of Chance and Kubrick in the same sentence is maybe risky because he may have been someone who managed to make even the most carefully calculated moves look like chance rather than actually relying on it. But he drew on what became available, things like the mannequin factory. <laughs> There's that general rundown feeling of all these locations, of, of these interiors, of the room where the hero is, is living, this incredibly austere space and the, the air shaft across which he looks into the other apartment. All those overhead shots of the stairwells. It really shows a, a New York that has not been refurbished recently and, and is really showing its age, showing its, its poverty. That is maybe what, one of the things that is so powerful about it. The absence of glamour, really. What you get is more the real poverty under this uh, rather threadbare glamour of Broadway and the dance hall. I didn't want murder. It's all gone wrong. Get going. The presence of New York in Killer's Kiss is overwhelming. The city really spills into the movie and makes it more than it would otherwise have been. Part of what is so moving about it now is to be able to see this lost world and to be inside those buildings, just the quality of the light, which he so beautifully captures. He draws on everything he had learned through, through years uh, as a photographer, through his own work and through the work of others. The influence of Luigi is, is obvious. But then, of course, also the influence of so much cinematography uh, and, and the 
the films that he surely absorbed uh, prior to making this. Uh, you, you can't help but think of Robert Wise's The Setup, Anthony Mann's T-Men, and Raw Deal, Edgar Ulmer's Detour, uh, Jules Dassin's The Naked City. He clearly has studied these films and the use that they made of urban spaces. In some ways, he goes them one better. It's as if he's determined to show that, that he can do better than that with the most minimal of budgets simply by using the, the sets that are there, the sets that are the reality. He was a great photographer, and the images that, that he finds and captures are really very beautiful, uh, memorable. They're not being used so much as, as backdrop. They, they are the foreground. That is the, it's the story that's the backdrop, in a way, to allow these images to really, uh, really sink in. For some reason, I feel like telling you I've never told anybody before. This is my father, and this is my sister, Iris. But I suppose it's really Iris's story. She was a Kubrick then. always made narrative difficult. I mean, I'm thinking of, well, 2001, which famously uh, uh, trails off in, into increasingly enigmatic episodes. Um, um, Full Metal Jacket, where you have two parts that, that seem, in a way, barely connected. There's an absolute chasm between the, the first part of the movie and the second part. I mean, Killer's Kiss is the movie that really falls apart into different pieces. So to make a connection between all the narrative lines, you, yeah, you, you do have to do some work of the imagination. Come on, give me back the scar. One scene leads into the next scene, but we never go all the way back and think about how that ties in with everything that was going on at the beginning of the film. For such a short film, it seems oddly long because a lot of things happen in it. The fact that they happen in this kind of unexpected and roundabout way distends the, the sense of time because we, we don't really at any moment quite know what to expect. Something's happened. I know. Do you know? Sure, you kissed me. We get only the most kind of tortured little glimpses of them without ever really having a very clear sense of, of who they are and what will become of them. There really doesn't seem to be much prospect of a truly happy ending because the, the overall mood is, is really uh, like a kind of bad dream. So really nothing exactly allows us to believe that these two people are going to be able to, to, to really open up to each other. They, they seem, on the contrary, to be almost uh, these, these figures of, of doom. The fact that it isn't really resolved, I think, is part of the charm. It's a movie that opens things up without actually tying them up again at the end. So I do think it's a, it's a kind of special film.